last week the airline industry was taken by storm when uh, the Dutch government invested 14, uh, took a 14% stake in Air France KLM, supposedly to counterbalance the weight of the French government, which has a 14% stake in the airline too. Today, uh, the CEO of KLM said he's not worried by this. Peter Elvis tells me it's time to move forward for the airline after the stake. Peter Elbers says uh, he's not worried, and I asked him then why the Dutch government took the stake in the first place. What did they hope to gain by taking a stake to equal the French? Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not a spokesperson for the Dutch, uh, for the Dutch government, obviously, uh, but in the statement the Dutch government has released in the press conference, which the Dutch mi uh, finance minister has given, uh, they put a lot of emphasis on the enormous importance of Schiphol as a hub and the role of KLM and the links to the economy of the country. Obviously something leads up to the government doing it. Sure. It doesn't happen in isolation. You don't wake up one morning and say, I'm going to invest 700 million euros in an airline. Usually not. No. Right. So have you felt that there has been, KLM has been at a disadvantage in the, U, in the Air France KLM relationship? Well, the, the Air France KLM group was built in 2004, and if I look what has happened since 2004, KLM has been able, as part of the Air France KLM group, really to move forward. We were a six billion company, uh, revenue company back in 2004. We are an 11 billion company today. We have been able to expand our network, have fantastic partnerships. So really, the, the going together with Air France has brought KLM a lot, and we've been able to sort of grow and thrive going, going forward. But it's also fair to say that in the last Last few years we had a few of our internal challenges and internal debates probably like in every marriage we had our fair share of this uh, discussions and now we're left with a really interesting situation well, uh, again, I think what is important now that we, we look at the business, we look how to move forward. Uh, as we learned uh, again this morning, we still have a lot of challenges in the European aviation, uh, in the European aviation field. And with all the governance stuff uh, finished now and um, hopefully a bit more clarity on that, we can move forward uh, focusing on our business. Do you envisage difficult times running KLM as a result of this new investment? No. No, I think we, we have a very clear strategy how to move forward with, with KLM. We have been doing that for the last couple of years. Again, within the context of the Air France KLM group, uh, we've done it with good results. Our results have gone up, our passenger appreciation have gone up, um, and there would be absolutely no need for the Dutch government, on the contrary, I should say, uh, to sort of uh, have a negative impact on that. Let's talk now about the industry. We heard this morning some pretty damning statistics about delays taxes, ineffective taxation. Uh, the airline, in the, I mean, European airlines are strong, but you're facing some serious headwinds. Yeah, I think the numbers this morning were, were really serious when it, comes to, when it comes to air traffic delays. And if you see um, a, a quarter or more than a quarter of all the flights having delays because of air traffic control and average delays going up and up and up and up. And that in combination with some of the ineffective legislation around EU 261, all kind of passenger claims, makes it a very tough spot to be in right now.